Okay, in this particular lesson, we are going to talk about body organization and exactly how we kind of arrange things and kind of categorize things within the body to make it easier to refer to that. So, the first thing that we're going to point out is the idea that you can really separate the human body into two specific portions. You can talk about the axial portion of the human body, which, just like it says, consists of the head, neck, and trunk. So you have head, neck, trunk, and then you have an appendicular portion. And the appendicular portion is actually going to be everything outside of the head, neck, and trunk, which is obviously going to be your limbs, your arms, and your legs. So we can talk about the body in reference to the things or the organs, the body parts that exist in the axial portion versus the appendicular portion. Sometimes those two terms can also be used when referring, referring to the skeleton, the axial skeleton versus the appendicular skeleton. Also, right, we can start talking about body cavities. So cavities, what I mean by that is I'm really talking about areas, all right? It's actually a confined space uh, within the human body, all right? So it's specifically one particular area where organs and body parts are going to be found. Um, and we're really going to focus on those internal organs that are located there. So when you look at body cavities, you can really take a very basic approach to breaking them down. And you can talk about the dorsal cavity. And by dorsal, I'm referring to the back versus the ventral cavity where I'm talking about the front. So really, I'm talking about dividing the body into front and back portions. So as you can see by this drawing, it's very clear that the dorsal body cavity is on the back side of the human body while the ventral body cavity is on the front, which is perfect because those two words, dorsal and ventral, are used exactly for that, back and front. We can then take the dorsal body cavity and we can divide it up into other cavities. So the dorsal body cavity contains the cranial cavity and the vertebral cavity. So obviously cranial, we're referring to the head, that's going to be the skull where the brain sits. And the vertebral cavity is going to be the area where the spinal cord sits and it's contained by vertebrae. So you can see we have the cranial cavity versus the vertebral cavity. Likewise, we can divide the ventral body cavity into smaller cavities. We can look at the thoracic, um, and that word may seem familiar because of the thorax, right? The thoracic cavity where your heart, lungs, right? This is kind of going to be like your chest region. And then you have the abdominal pelvic cavity, which you can see abdomino, right? Or abdominal and pelvic, right? For pelvic. So you can kind of really divide it into like your general stomach and intestinal area versus your pelvic area, which is going to be the very end of the large intestines and then going all the way down towards your reproductive organs. So we're really kind of dividing up into, if we look at that ventral body cavity, we're dividing up into thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic. Kind of like a, a top to bottom organization there. Just like you can see, we have our thoracic cavity on the top, and then we have our abdominal cavity, which is in the middle, and our pelvic cavity. And like I said before, these two cavities together are commonly referred to as the abdomino pelvic cavity. This is just another picture that's diagramming for us the different body cavities, so we have cranial, vertebral, thoracic, abdominal, pelvic. And in addition to that, we have some other smaller body cavities. When we talk about the head, we have specific cavities for locations within our head, kind of gets broken down a bit more. The oral versus the nasal, orbital, right, often the word orbital is used with eyes, and then we have a cavity for ears, right? So we have some different cavities that we break up the head for. 
in addition, there's just a few key words that we're going to refer to when we're talking about this body organization. We're going to talk about viscera being organs, right? We're going to talk about the diaphragm, right? So my horrible lung drawings again. The diaphragm being that muscle that sits right below the lungs, right, right below the thoracic cavity, but above the abdominal pelvic cavities, all right? And it's going to be useful in controlling breathing. These two points, I'm already talking about exactly how the diaphragm works, are actually kind of interesting, and you'll learn more about them when you cover the respiratory system in A and P2. You also have mediastinum, right, which is going to be a specific area of the thoracic cavity, and that specific area of the thoracic cavity, remember, it's not an actual structure, it's an area, right, is typically going to be what divides the right and left sides of the thoracic cavity, so like right versus left lung. Um, you may want to perhaps think about this in reference to your sternum, your breastbone that kind of runs down the center of your rib cage, and think of it in terms of that particular vicinity. So this is just kind of showing you body cavities in reference. You'll see here the mediastinum being this whole location, just like I said, where the, the sternum is, the diaphragm being across this area, um, and we're not really indicating all of the viscera, we're not indicating all of the organs, so that would be a pretty thorough diagram in that case. In addition, we have membranes. Um, a nice simple way to think about membranes is that they operate like cushions. All right? They're a little extra padding for the organs and the structures within your body. Um, and the reason that they work so well as cushions is because they release a fluid, all right? And we should know that fluid, you know, things kind of sit well, suspend well in fluid, float nicely in fluid, and it kind of offers a little buffer, a little protection from being bumped around inside so much. And when we talk about membranes, we talk about two different layers, a parietal layer versus a visceral layer. Well, we talked before that visceral was the organ. So this is going to be the layer that covers the organs, while the parietal is kind of going to be what's on the outside, the walling off the particular cavity. Um, I guess a really nice way of thinking about this is that if you have an organ, your specific organ, you're also going to have a visceral layer that's going to cover right around that organ. Please forgive the little overlap there that occurs due to the smart board. All right. And then you're going to have this fluid layer. All right. This fluid layer is going to be that buffer. And then outside, you're going to have that parietal layer. So it kind of makes sure that the organ is floating around inside this area for protection. So within the thoracic cavity, we have a pleural membrane. So we'll have the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura. Uh, basically, what we're talking about is that when we're looking at our lungs, bad drawing again, we're going to have a layer that sits right around the lungs, which would be our visceral pleura. We're going to have fluid in the middle, but then we're going to have that parietal layer that's kind of going to be attaching to the whole entire cavity, right? So to the walls of the thoracic cavity. In addition to the pleural membrane, we have a pericardial, right? Cardial should automatically make you think heart, and that's exactly what this is. This is going to be those two membranes that are covering the heart. So the visceral is going to wrap right around the heart versus parietal kind of going to be a small area that's going to buffer it against the walls of, of the thoracic cavity. Um, so right here, this is a really nice drawing, or I'm sorry, diagram that shows we have our two lungs in these particular regions, and you can see that we have one layer 
and a second layer, but in between them, we have a dark area. Sorry, it doesn't line up perfectly, guys. All right, that dark area is going to be that fluid that we were talking about, that slippery fluid that they're going to be releasing. So that this would be what I'm drawing right here is going to be the visceral pleura versus the parietal pleura. Right? Um, which are labeled. We've got one label here and a label over here. In addition, we have that pericardial cavity. So we've got that slippery fluid, the parietal pericardium, and the visceral pericardium, right? So we're going to be looking at those as well. This kind of diagrams very nicely how everything sits, a nice cross section. Remember we talked about cross sections. Then we have our abdominal pelvic membranes. Abdominal pelvic, pelvic membranes, we have the peritoneal membrane, right? This is going to be what really lines all of those organs. It's kind of a large membrane system. Uh, so kind of demonstrates how we have all of our different organs and we have that choice of color. We have various membranes in various locations doing their specific jobs for providing that cushioning support. So we have the visceral peritoneum versus the parietal peritoneum and it's kind of covering all these different organs within the double pelvic cavity. Uh, this is specifically showing organs in the abdominal cavity. Our next slide is actually going to nicely organize all of those different cavities and membranes. So if you look, we have our specific names of cavities here, but we can take that dorsal cavity and we can split it, just like we can take that ventral cavity and we can split it as well. But then we can take that abdominal pelvic cavity and divide it as well. And we'll talk about the specific viscera, the organs that are located there, and the membranes that you'll find there. I didn't specifically discuss meninges, but we will talk more about those at a later point. All right, so we have the pleural membrane, pericardium, and the peritoneum. So that pretty much wraps it up for our lesson talking about organization within the body. If you have any questions, please see me.